This is Chuck Harmony, and you're checking out You Know I Got Soul.com. One of your first major placements was on Mary J. Blige's album, um, the song Work in uh -huh. Progress. You know, how did you get that opportunity? Oh, um, it was really through Neo. I, um, I was working together with Neo, and, and she commissioned him to write a song, and so he asked me to uh, do a track that felt like um, how that felt, so I did it, and, and he wrote the song, and that's, that's how it came about. Okay, so, you know, how did you originally link up with Neo? Um, well, a friend of his manager uh, actually kind of got a hold of some of my tracks and kind of played it for Neo. That's kind of how it happened, I guess. It's a, it, was, it was just like happenstance, really. Uh, this guy that wanted to manage me happened to be a friend of Neo's manager, so he played him some, some of the, the stuff that I've been doing, and uh, Neo liked it, so... I met his management and we we'll work from there. Okay, and you know, what is the creative process like with, you know, yourself and Neo or maybe Claude Kelly? Like, how does a song become a song for you guys? Um, well, with, with Neo and Claude, it's different. Um, both, both of them, um, we usually start at the, um, Neo wants to start at the, at the top, like what he want to talk about, and he might ask me to do a track like this, and then I do the track and then he write to it. Me and Claude, we kind of just write at the piano. We do the whole, write the whole song, and then I do the track. Okay. And, you know, a lot of your songs, you know, have live instruments and all of that. How important is it for a producer to, you know, have a musical background? I, I, I mean, I personally think it's very, very important to me because that's where the integrity of music comes from, from to me, but um, unfortunately in this day and time, it's not necessary, you know what I'm saying, so, but I, w I, w I would behoove anybody who wants to be a produ producer to to learn an instrument, it'll take, you, it'll take you much farther than just learning a piece of equipment. Yeah, definitely, and you know, I read that um, one of your future goals is to obtain a doctorate in music, you know, so it seems like music is more than just a career for you, so, you know, kind of talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's really a passion, and, and um, when I was in college, I realized, because um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a piano player, Okay. and this, uh, one of my teachers, Dr. Hostetter, um, uh, she asked one of our assignments, we we him getting piano lab and she asked us to um, harmonize uh, I think it was Jingle Bells and Mary Had some simple melody okay. and so I harmonized it with all the jazz chords I had been practicing and she kicked me out of the class because she, she told me that that I was basically playing around and around and I got a standing ovation from people whatever but she kicked me out of the class but at that point I realized that a lot of teachers are not good teachers because they never really realized their dream. You know what I'm saying? Like Dr. Oscar was like a frustrated musician. So she couldn't really she couldn't really help me to expand what I was doing because she'd never been to where I'm, 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 I was trying to go. Yeah. So I figure if I can get to where I'm actually trying to go, which I'm, I'm mostly there, then I will be a great teacher. Yeah. I won't be frustrated, and I can actually, I can actually be uh, uh, a good example for the kids that I'm trying to teach. Because most teachers don't get to the professional level and then come back and teach. Yeah, that's that's my goal. Okay, you know, of course, you won a Grammy for Fantasia's "Bittersweet." You know, take me back to that moment when you found out you won. Oh man, it, it was great. The, the vocal performance Grammy. It was, it was um, because. That was a special vocal, like, Fantasia was crying when she was singing that song, you know what I'm saying? So I remember the magic that actually happened and the talking part and how we turned down the lights and, and did all of the things that, the nuances that it took for her to get that, um, get that perfect performance out. And, and so it, it was really a magical moment just to hear that what we was doing in the studio was, like, recognized to that level. Yeah, definitely. And... I've noticed with a lot of the music that you've produced, you know, the
the songs have a lot of substance to them. You know, a lot of songs on the radio, they don't really have too much of that. Is that really important for you when you're working with a writer? Like, if they give you something, you have to make sure that it has substance? Yeah, man. It's, um, I try to do nothing less than a good song. You know what I'm saying? That's my motto. And so, I work with people who's comfortable doing that. You know, like, um, I, pro I, don't, I don't work with a lot of writers. You know what I'm saying? I work with maybe four or five because I know people that really have integrity in their writing. In the, in the lyrics, and, and, and so that's that's the only kind of music that I want to present to the world, so that's how it goes. It's very important to me. Okay. And, you know, you work with a lot of, you know, the bigger R&B and soul artists such as Chrisette Michelle, Fantasia, Jasmine Sullivan, Lettucey. How do you kind of, I guess, differentiate the sound between all of them? Yeah, I mean, when, when, when I come in the studio every day, it's, it's just a fresh slate. I don't have any preconceived notions. And I think a lot of a lot of producers, especially in, in urban, they like to give artists their sound. And different, because I'm a musician, I'm able to um, give the artist the artist sound. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can, I can kind of adapt to what the artist um, sound and what their vision is for their album. You know what I'm saying? That's why I get to uh, work on a lot of... Um, projects where I do the whole project because I'm able to deliver what they actually, the vision that they actually have for their whole album, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's how I do it. Just keep, just not having any preconceived notions when you go in, just kind of cater to what they're trying to do. Yeah. Um, one of your biggest songs so far is Pretty Girl Rock by Carrie Hilson, you know. Talk to me about the creation of that song and how it came about. Oh, well Pretty Girl Rock, it, it was, it was, um, I was in, in New York and, and, um, Neo's manager called me and he was like, yeah, we got a, we got a session with Carrie, um, the next day. It was just, that was a Friday and it was on a Saturday and, and so, um, I stayed at the studio for like, after my session. As a matter of fact, I was recording Bittersweet. That's what I was doing in New York. Okay. But after, um. Uh, after that session was over, I stayed around in the studio for the rest of the night and just came up with that track because that's the only track I had that I thought could fit Carrie Hilson. Yeah. You know what I'm so um, I flew, it, flew to L.A. and played it for D.O. He loved it. So he started his writing thing and then Carrie came and she loved it. So it was kind of organic like that. Okay. And, you know, of course, we've heard reports that Neo's about to start on his new album. You know, can you kind of tell us anything about it right now? Oh, all I can say is that I've worked on it, and what I've heard from it is, is Neo. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's not the beautiful monster Neo. It's, it's those great songs that everybody loved Neo for. Not to say beautiful. I actually love beautiful. But you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. <laughs> he really back to, to, <laughs> to what he was what he was known for. And that was great, great song. So the song that I gave him was a great song. So I'm, I'm excited for people to hear. Definitely, man. And, you know, who else are you currently working with? I've been working on this, this project for a long time. This artist named K-9. Um, uh, I did his whole album. I did uh, P.V. Brown, the majority of our album. I'm back in with Chris and Michelle. I'm going in with Usher and John Legend at the top of the year. Um, I'm working on my own art. Okay. Talk to me a little yeah. bit about your own artists. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 everybody asks me that. Yep. All I can say is something fresh and it's R&B and it's young and it's, it's exciting. You know what I'm saying? And I, I always, it was, it's a dream project of mine because I always figured that if I can get... <laughs> a young artist to do like the quality of music that I've been doing then we might be able to make some noise in this music business so that's what I'm hoping for. Okay and you know you've had a lot of R&B success but you know right now on the radio there's not a lot of R&B so you know how do you kind of balance between making something that you like and, and then also making something that has commercial success? Um, I just, I, I just don't think about it you know what I'm saying like, like I got a lot of, of pop pop stuff coming out next year uh, but I just I kind of just don't think about I just let everything be organic because I don't want to overthink what I'm doing you know what I'm saying like if 
if if I come in the studio and I got a session with a pop artist, then um, I just do it organically. I don't really think about what's on the radio, or what's gonna be a hit, what's gonna be a smash. I kind of just just do a great song in any genre and keep that. Um, that's how I keep myself from from falling victim to that that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, that's all that I had for you. Is there anything that you'd like to add? No, man, I, I really appreciate you taking time out to, to chat with me. Um, 